Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you 10 floral fragrances for men. That's right, 10 floral dominant fragrances that I think a men can totally rock, that are sexy, very confident from my collection that I don't see mentioned too often, or at least most of these I don't see mentioned too often. And I wanted to share my thoughts with you guys. So let's get into the video. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because this is a very common question I get asked. Can men wear this? Can I wear this? Can a guy pull this off? And normally it's on floral dominant fragrances. And I think when we think about the men's fragrance section and the women's fragrance section, yes, it's marketing, but generally people who prefer masculine fragrances, they prefer to smell like this and women, you know, or people who prefer feminine fragrances prefer to smell like this. So there's notes and compositions on both sides. Let's be honest, department stores, fragrance houses, they want to make money. That's what they care about. So why would they market something if they don't think they're going to make money? They're going to market it to the, to the people that they think are going to spend the most money. So when somebody asks me, can a man wear this? I assume they're asking, is this the type of composition that I would find when I shop because I prefer to shop at the mail? side of the fragrance counter and there's nothing wrong with that wear whatever you want to wear and if that's primarily men's fragrances then awesome wear whatever makes you happy so i chose 10 fragrances from my collection that i think have a predominant floral note in them that smell more shared sometimes they lean a little bit more masculine and i'm going to talk about why i think they smell a little bit more masculine than maybe more feminine leaning or more shared if I have reviews of any of them, I'll link them below. And I'd also love to know what you guys think too. Do you agree with my choices? And what other recommendations for floral leaning scents do you think uh, men can rock or people who prefer masculine fragrances? Anyway, let's get into the video. One of the most common ones I see, and probably one of my favorite fragrances because it's in my top five, is Armani Privé Rose d'Arbe. Now, rose is one of those notes that is always kind of attributed to feminine fragrances, femininity, romance, love, and I get it. And when I see masculine roses, I either see them in woods, specifically like oud, saffron, patchouli combos, or more of a Middle Eastern style rose, something very watery, aquatic, light, effervescent, again, probably paired with aromatics and woods. And I think a fantastic example of like woods and something sultry and sexy, but not leaning on feminine, very definitively shared in my opinion, is Rose d'Arabie. I don't need to go into this too much because again, this is one of the fragrances that most people understand, know about. It's a cult fragrance. And for me personally, this is one of those scents that is easy to wear, especially when you're looking for one of the, the kind of slightly more Middle Eastern inspired fragrances that has a predominant kind of sultry, silky, very decadent rose note in there with some beautiful aromatics. For a masculine fragrance. I think that men can most definitely wear this because the woods and aromatics slightly tame the sweetness of the rose in a way that makes it smell very confident and sexy. But then you have these fragrances that have this kind of beautiful jamminess that also have a woodiness to them that's very powerful, very sexy, that perfectly pair as a more unisex or shared scent. And I normally see the more stronger pungent versions of those from Montal or Mancera, but I think if you're looking for a slightly more elevated version that has more of a beautiful rose scent to it, um, Armani Privé's Rose d'Arabie is a great example. That doesn't mean the other ones aren't great. But if you're looking for a less feminine rose and more of a shared rose where everything is balanced, this one is great. If you're the type of guy where even a bit of sweetness in your rose is something that you're just not looking for and that's totally okay. I'm always of the mindset where what makes you happy, makes your heart sing, makes you feel confident and attractive. You don't have to listen to anybody that says you should be able to wear that. Who cares what society thinks? That's true, who cares what society thinks? But really the only person that matters is you. And if you just at the end of the day don't like it, it doesn't make you feel attractive, doesn't make you feel confident, it doesn't matter what society says, it matters what you think. And if you just don't like the sweeter roses, those more indulgent deep red roses, if you want something a little bit more effervescent, a little bit lighter, a little more aromatic, but you're looking for a really beautiful oud rose combo, may I recommend oud silk mood from 
Francis Kajan. Now the reason why I chose the Eau de Parfum, um, specifically Oud Silk Mood, has to do with the beautiful aromatic quality that this fragrance has. There's papyrus in here, which I really enjoy, and I think that that pairs with the Oud and the Rose in here really nicely in a way that adds a lightness and a brightness to this fragrance, but not like how the bergamot adds a brightness to this fragrance, although the bergamot does definitely help. Now, when I look at a composition of a fragrance, sometimes you have heavy, indulgent gourmands, you have bright, fresh, energizing, fresh citruses, you have salty, briny, but still very aromatic uh, aquatics. There's something about oud fragrances that usually have a funky, very complex decadence to them that I really enjoy. And I want to do a video talking about Francis Grosjean's ouds because quite frankly, I think that he's really mastered taking the intimidating parts of ouds and kind of making them more wearable without masking the parts of them that people are challenging. They're a great introductory ouds so people can kind of start learning why people might be a little challenged by some of the aspects of oud it doesn't completely um, white out the parts of oud that people enjoy and make it such a special note. But what it does do is it tames it slightly so that you can ride it a little bit. It's fun. It's kind of like going on a tandem uh, skydiving trip. You know, you're on the back or on the front, I don't know how it works, of a skydiver. So you're still experiencing all the, the euphoria and the, the fear of doing it, but you're a little bit safer. It's not like you're watching it in VR like I would do because I'm deathly scared of heights. But you're not also jumping by yourself out of a plane. There's a bit of safety to this, but you still get the thrill of the oud. What I like is that the effervescent kind of dry, almost broominess of this composition is what tames this rose, but doesn't take away from the rose. So roses can by definition, depending on the rose, I, there's a variety of different roses. I mean, obviously, roses can smell vastly different depending on the rose and also the soil where they grow. You can have the same rose and kind of, you know, break it apart and have the same bush and grow it in different areas and the, the different soil and climates can make it smell a little bit different. But when it comes down to what this fragrance does with rose is it tames the sweetness and the syrupiness of the rose and you get this lighter and fresher but still semi kind of aquatic rose considering it's a Damascus rose I think it's it's light it's airy the papyrus again gives it a bit of a billowy effervescent dry broominess that's the, the best way I can describe it it's silk mood because it's supposed to be aromatic and silky and light on the skin and considering it's an oud fragrance I think is fantastic but the reason why I wanted to put this as a floral is because the rose, in my opinion, is very dominant. And it's dominant and it's able to be dominant, but in very shared, borderlining on completely masculine way, is because of the aromatics and the woods in here. Everything is balancing and kind of taming and holding back the parts of a rose that would make it more of a feminine fragrance and more of a feminine leaning scent, more sweet, more romantic, more femme fatale, uh, more syrupy and jammy. And it's doing it in a way that's more aromatic. It's a little bit more um, funky from the oud, but again, like a very tamed funk, not again, like that fecal barnyardiness that some ouds can have. And it's also just so poor, perfect on this. I don't know why I was gonna say porpoise, so perfect on the skin. I had to think of the best example of a masculine fragrance that had a dominant floral note, it would probably be this one, to be completely honest. I think this one's fantastic. And these two scents I just think are fabulous. They definitely have a predominant, more orange blossy, blossomy, neroli, leaning scent, but do it in a way that I think is very unique and special. This one is from La Via del Profumo. It's holy water. I've done a review on this. This is more of an effervescent, kind of tangy, energizing, blossomy smell. And there's just something about this that I really love. But <laughs> I, I've already talked about this. I talk about this one. I'm going to talk about it more. I really want to focus, though, on a different style of orange blossom scent because Livia del Profumo's Holy Water is to me when I see Neroli style 
fragrances with a lot of pet grain or orange blossoms. It's kind of how it goes. It's lighter, it's a little bit more aquatic, it's a little bit more effervescent in regards, but I didn't want to have another like neroli musk scent. I wanted something a little bit different, but definitely recommend checking out Holy Water. But this is a newer fragrance to my collection and it's Orange Blossom from Flower City Fragrances. And the reason why I wanted to include this one is because when I smell fragrances that are focusing on orange blossom orchards and when are orange orchards or things like that, you get a sweetness from those because when you smell the flowers of orange trees or citrus trees, they're very sweet and they're very creamy. Oh, ooh, hi. But something about that is usually translated way more floral way more sweet, way more creamy. And to me, creamy florals smell shared, but lean a little bit more on the feminine side. What I like about Orange Blossom from Flower City Fragrances is that this is really focusing on the experience of walking through an orchard when you live in the impressive, oppressive Florida, Florida climate, even though I think that they were trying to mimic or kind of emulate or be inspired by California. Florida's Florida's gross. Florida's, Florida's weather's disgusting. And if you live in Florida and you think it's pretty here, I don't know who hurt you, but I'm very sorry. However, it's very humid and very hot. But when you are around orange trees or orange groves, and I've had the pleasure of that, when there's hot, humid air to the point where it's like you're walking through hot soup and you get a hot breeze, and you are hit with the smell of trees. And we're talking about like trees that are baking under the sun. You're getting the smell of the leaves. You're getting the smell of the dirt. You're getting the smell of the flowers. That is something that is so beautiful. It is one of the only good things about Florida summers. And this has that. So this has almost like a kind of concentrated smell of all of that without the oppressive scent memories of sweating, just walking from your car to two feet to the grocery store. There's something about this that's very idealistic, it's very beautiful, and it captures all the beauty of orange blossoms and being outside and sunshine in a way that doesn't feel as almost one note as Atelier Cologne can in some of their more citrus fragrances, it feels a little bit transportive, a little bit more transportive, a little bit more inspired, but very wearable. And I like how it smells like a warm breeze through an orchard, focusing on orange blossom and the entire experience of being in an orchard. So if you're looking for more of a citrus scent that focuses on the floral parts of citruses, and you're tired of every type of scent being like Neroli Portofino or a musky Pettigrain with an orange blossom, this is something really special worth checking out. It's one that I've really enjoyed. But if you do like those other types of fragrances, Holy Water from La Via del Profumo, I find to be very special and different, but I wanted to really showcase uh, orange blossom from fragrance, uh, Flower City Fragrances. Now, if you're looking for kind of more of a gourmand-like element, I have two here that I would probably just say these are fantastic. I've talked about this one. This is Choco Violet from Mancera. This one I love because I find violet to be one of those very basically unisex florals. Even the very sweet powdery violets, there's something about it that doesn't smell too much like this is what women wear or this is what a fragrance marketed to women wear. There's something that about it that's very deep and I like it when it's paired with like licorice notes. But I also really like it when it's paired with chocolate and there's something about this that's just very sexy, very easy to wear. And I think the chocolate makes this as more of a shared scent. This is definitely more aromatic the more that you wear it, but this is probably one of my favorite fragrances from the House of Mancera. And if you're looking for a gourmand fragrance that has nice floral elements to it, that's more of a shared scent. This is definitely one I would recommend. Or one from Gallagher Fragrances, which I haven't reviewed yet, and I need to, is Rose Noir. Now this one definitely has that beautiful leather, there's an oud in here, but it has that really kind of gorgeous like apple crisp accord 
that he created that I love that's also in uh, Midnight Jasmine and Rosé All Day. And the rose in here is front and center, but the leather and the oud is kind of what pulls this kind of a little bit more masculine. Very sexy, very in your face, kind of spicy boozy a little bit. And I love it. It's absolutely gorgeous. So this is another gourmand fragrance that's borderline on like very powerful and very sexy. And the rose in here is just absolutely front and center. So next two are ones that I would assume people would think, oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. The first one is Madrona from House of Matriarch. And the reason why I wanted to include this one is because I feel like if I'm going to be talking about florals for men, lavender, I mean, lavender can be considered an aromatic. I'm considering it a flower. Madrona to me is the, the fragrance that kind of got me into House of Matriarch. It's also one of the best fragrances when it kind of takes lavender out of something that is medicinal, culinary, a food, uh, aromatherapy. There's something about it that this just smells like lavender in the wild, something very aromatic, something very grounding, something very beautiful. And what I love about those types of fragrances that Christy creates is they definitely smell very shared. And I like that this isn't so much like your typical masculine, aromatic, lavender, woody fragrance. There's something about this that's very pure and something about this that I really enjoy. And so, yeah, this is kind of like, you know, again, like Oud Silk Mood or Armani Privé Rose de Araby. This is like, yeah, of course this would be on this list, but I wanted to include a lavender. Now, I also wanted to include an aquatic rose. Now, aquatic roses to me are another great way to take rose and make it more shared or more masculine. And I wanted to include this one because I've been talking about this one recently because this is a fragrance that I think if you are going to look for a masculine rose, this is one of the best versions of something that is not dominated by like ouds or very strong woods. And it's Strange Invisible Aquarian Roses. Now this, like I said before, I've described the scent as smelling like botanical. It kind of smells a little kelpy, a little dilly, like a little dill pickly, but not like like, you know, like Le Labo Santal, it has that kind of like seaweedy, kelpy, very, um, almost like a dryness to it, a greenness to it with this fragrance, a very kind of sour wood in the background with this very strong, uh, aquatic rose and it's beautiful and it's gorgeous. And this to me smells like what I would consider a masculine rose fragrance to smell like this one. I love it. Although it smells like a mermaid's rose garden. That's what I describe it as. It's not salty in the way that like a pickle is salty or, you know, a pretzel is salty or like salt kissy air fragrances are salty. It's like salty like seaweed, like deep and green, but not bitter. But there's something about it that again has that kind of almost like santal, like sour wood, aromatic green wood um, vibe to it, which is really, really nice. Again, if you're looking for a masculine daytime, summertime fragrance to wear, and you're looking for a rose that's different, uh, this one is well worth it. Last two to me are splurge worthy fragrances. Uh, the first one, I wanted to include a very dominant white floral. The reason why this is part of this list has to do with the tuberose. Tuberose is one of those notes that I think can be troubling to some people, but in this fragrance, it is such a magnificent tuberose. I don't find the tuberose to lead too creamy. I don't find the tuberose to lean too musky. I don't find the tuberose to lean too mature, too transportive. It is just perfect. And sometimes when a floral in and of itself is perfect, there's something about it that's just like right in the middle. I'm definitively, here I am. I am, I am, I am not masculine, I'm not feminine, I'm shared. So that's, that's this one. I mean, that's really all I can say. It is just gorgeous. So if you're looking for a white floral dominant shared scent that if you prefer masculine fragrances you can wear, 
Atlantide is gorgeous and again splurge worthy. She's expansive but she's an experience and, and it's worth it. And I had to include another one because you guys know how much I love this. Oud Jasmine from Royal Cl Crown. I don't know why it's Cloud. What is wrong with me today? You know how much I love this fragrance. First, you have to like Jasmine. Second, you have to like Oud. Royal Crown is pricey. This is expensive. Do not blind buy it. Please do not blind buy it. This is not going to be for everybody. But the Oud in here, again, kind of like um, Francis Kurjan with Oud, it's tamed and balanced, but that doesn't mean that the parts of it that people love that make it distinctively special and expensive aren't celebrated. And what I like about this scent is that it smells like a beautiful, decadent, night-blooming jasmine. And jasmine, again, is a note that is very well loved and celebrated in perfumery. And it is not something that is just for women. And I love how it is not always just for women, but sometimes it gets greener and dirtier and muskier when I see it marketed for more and more shared fragrances. And I love it when it's woody and in here it's deep and luscious and mysterious and a little bit um, rebellious. And this is such a beautiful fragrance. So if you're looking for a jasmine dominant fragrance, for you know shared scent or if you're a guy and you're looking for a jasmine dominant scent this is most definitely one i would recommend anyway guys that's it those are the 10 fragrances from my collection that are more shared that i think if you prefer masculine fragrances if you're more comfort or com comfortable and confident there we go sometimes i can say words i think that those would be definitely worth checking out and wearing i don't think that they lean two towards the compositions you find on the women's side of the fragrance counter. However, if I did have to recommend one, it would be Oud Silk Mood from Francis Grigion. Let me grab it. It's right here. And the second one would be Flower City Fragrances Orange Blossom. I think these two to check out uh, for men. I think these are great. I think that these smell very special and are very wearable. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I would love to know your recommendations. Do you have any masculine leaning floral scents that you would recommend? Let me know in the comment section below. Do you agree with my choices? Do you disagree with my choices? Let me know as well. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.